Hello, in this tutorial we're going to look at how to import images into JewelryCAD Dream and there's two general methods for approaching this. Um, the end result is we, is the same, we want to have those curves from the image. Okay, there's two general methods that I would use depending on the complexity of the image. Okay, and the first method is simply dragging and dropping an image into JCD. Uh, 3D environment, okay, and it will automatically produce the curves. You have to scroll out a bit, and you can see I just drag and drop this image. It's a PNG file. You can do it with JPEGs, and it creates the curves from the image. Okay, it's pretty neat that um, tool, but as you can uh, expect, you know it works best with simple images preferably black and white images, something that have defined edges. Okay, if we were to try and do this with a colored image with a lot of background, then we're going to get a different result and it may not be so easy. In fact, let me just try and find an image to demonstrate this with. Okay, so I just grabbed a couple more images off the web and uh, what we have here is uh, we have a Another image, now this is against a white background, but a colored image, okay? Now we probably will be fine with this, dragging and dropping it. We probably will be able to pick up the um, the outer edge curves, we'll get other curves inside. But since we have this definitive boundary, this edge, we should get pretty nice curves. The second or third image is a color image, okay? It's quite small, but you know, we have a, a colored background, we have a lot going on, and this will be pretty much hopeless if we try to drag and drop it in, but we'll take a look. Okay, so let's uh, undo this one. The silhouette is always going to work. It's it's very easy. Okay, that's PNG, black on black, but, um, you know, if, you, if you're trying to get an animal, just do a Google search, or, well, it doesn't have to be an animal, but do a Google search, images, um, I don't know, in this case I did dolphin silhouette, um, you could do a tree silhouette, anything silhouette or black and white, and you should return some good images to use. Okay, in this case, we have a colored dolphin against a white background. Okay, drag and drop it, we get the curves, we still get a pretty nice outline there, okay, since we had the white background. There's a whole bunch of other curves in here that you may or may not want to use. Just erase them if you don't want them. You know, in this case, you know, this area for the eye might be quite useful. It it's, defines the location of the eye. We may want to have that. Okay, so this is another method. Well, it's not another method. There's just another image, and it works. Okay, so finally we have this image here that really has a lot going on. We try to import it, and like I expected, it's hopeless. Okay, there's, there's just no uh, use to this um, these curves. Okay, so we use an alternative method in this case, and that is to insert a sketch. Right click, insert sketch on a datum. Okay, and this time we click on image, we're importing an image, and I pick the dolphin image, and I can just place it now, drag it out. Okay, so we've imported an image into our sketch environment. It's two-dimensional. Okay, this image is two-dimensional. So how do we generate the curves? Well, we're just going to have to trace it. Okay, we're going to have to create the curves manually by tracing around our dolphin. We use the point curve. Okay, typically I want to do a create curve uh, closed since I'll be doing it in one fell swoop. Sometimes you may want to build up your curves in parts. Okay, so we're just going to trace now. And obviously I'm doing this quite quickly, but you can take your time. And you're just picking the outside points. And there's one thing I want to actually show you. You may find yourself at times with these um, inputting options, the forced selections like here, it's forcing a uh, constraint in line with the x equals zero axis. And when I'm actually tracing, I don't like these. Okay, they're pretty useful uh, outside of tracing, but 
when I'm tracing, it can cause issues um, with our points. Say we have we get points that are auto constrained together, and we're trying to modify them like this. It's not going to behave uh, very well. So um, sometimes what I do before I start tracing, in this case, is actually fine. You know, just needs to do a few adjustments, but um, I'm not going to adjust that too much. Uh, yeah, like I said, sometimes before I begin tracing, I like to turn off these auto constraints. They're called smart picks, and you just do it here. Okay, it's in this document aware toolbar. Okay, so we're just disabling that smart uh, snap filter, and then when we're placing our points, you see we're not snapping, we're not getting this x equals a zero constraint. We can just place our points freely and they're not auto constrained. Okay, just toggle it back on. Okay, and you'll see, you know, we get these constraints and it can be a pain sometimes. Okay, so that is how we trace our um, image. Just when you're done tracing, right click on the image or, or select the image and hit blank. Okay, you can blank it out like any image or any entity, sorry. Uh, so we blank that out, otherwise when we leave the sketch it will be in the 3D environment. So we have our curves here, exit into our 3D environment and it's just a sketch that we can do our operations on.